Welcome to Pasture Poultry Talk, episode number 42. I'm your lovable host, Mike Badger. It's been a hectic May, and uh, the podcast has kind of slipped away a little bit, but it is not forgotten. I promise you that. Uh, We're back here with some episodes, and I've actually got a little bit of a treat for you. Um, Starting in episode 41, we did a a, a on-feed farm, or hey, an on-farm feed mixing podcast. Uh, with Jeff Maddox. We're going to carry the Jeff Maddox theme here a little bit. And uh, the next couple episodes, next three actually, will be very concentrated informational uh, slash technical bits of of, uh, pasture poultry information. Um, I had the opportunity to, to drive down with Jeff to Arkansas on the way to uh, Terrell Spencer's uh, uh, pasture poultry field day. We had a an app of field day down there for pasture poultry producers. Uh, we did a two day event. Actually, the second day was was pigs, but um, I just hung out for that one. And on the way down, we decided to break out the recorder and record a few episodes. Uh, just kind of riff on some topics and some topics that were always top of mind some things that had popped up maybe in the app list and that's where we're going to pick up today now before we jump into the call i just want to warn you that the the audio quality is good the level is good you can understand what jeff is saying however it's kind of like riding in the in the truck with jeff you hear the the road noise um as you're rolling down the highway Normally, when I have a little bit of noise, I can pull it out, but <clears throat> the road noise and Jeff's voice are kind of at the same level, and I can't really get the road noise out at any appreciable level and have Jeff sound normal. So, you're just going to have to deal with it. I think it's okay. It's uh, part of the flavor, if you will. And our first episode here is going to be on pecking. I think it's really an authoritative guide to pecking. Um, people often have the mistaken for well, it's not mistaken, but they also they often have the the initial reaction that pecking is always feed related, but that's just not the case. Feed is one issue of of many, and Jeff walks through this, and you can if if you listen to this from the top, you'll kind of get the idea of a flow chart here. You know, you need to to think about where the bird is pecking and and making some environmental observations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the call. You, on this call, you're going to hear probably a few voices. Um, we're also traveling with Casey Rogers, who's a livestock specialist with Fertrell. She'll chime in. Um, there are some interns in the truck named Chet and Walker. You don't necessarily hear them, I don't think, on the on the call, but uh, they are referenced a time or two by name. And since this first one was primarily a a response to a really ongoing long conversation in the APA uh, listserv you know basically Jeff just runs with the the diagramming and the flow charting of the of the troubleshooting process and uh, there's very little need for for anyone else really to ask questions Um, so you'll hear a few questions at the end but in general we just let Jeff talk. Enjoy. All right, so at the top, you want to start with that header of poultry slash cannibalism. Okay. All right, and then coming off of that, you want to draw lines to those four categories of areas being pecked. So start from the head, go to the tail. So you're going to have the head pecking, then you're going to have the saddleback pecking, the tail head pecking, and the bent pecking. Okay. So, a lot of times, back of the head pecking uh, can be contributed to. So there's multiple factors here, but in most cases, it's a light intensity or an environmental discomfort, whether it's too hot, too bright a sunlight, and rarely, but sometimes, crowding. And the last reason would be methionine if they're eating the feathers. Okay. So then the saddle back, <clears throat> the saddle feathers, are usually where they peck for 
for a methionine deficiency because those feathers are the easiest to eat. They tend to be softer and easier to digest. So nine times out of ten, that's going to be the eating feathers. Uh, but a lot of times those feathers are actually missing. Not Those feathers become missing due to roosters and then scratches develop and then the scratches get pecked by the other hen. So the, the initial cause for missing feathers on the backs is a lot of times rooster damage that then becomes something else. Tail head pecking, the large feathers in the tail head, 99% of the time are due to overcrowding or competition for a desired space. So if there's not enough feeder and water or space, the birds feel cramped and, and too tight of living conditions, <clears throat> they'll generally peck the tail heads. And then vent pecking can be from mites and lice, it can be from peck outs, where they're getting pecked when one egg's getting laid by the other hen and or they actually sometimes can do it from self-grooming you know where they're trying to groom out the mites and the lice and they cause a scratch or a red mark back there that then becomes a cannibal spot We should go back and recap how to fix each one of these. But the first line of defense, <clears throat> after identifying what is causing the cannibalization, is to put one tablespoon of salt per five gallons of drinking water for three days to stop the pecking. During that three days, we have to correct whatever the issue is, or they'll go back to pecking again. And if they allow pecking to continue for too long, it actually becomes a, a mental habit known as hysteria, where they just, it's a habit, <clears throat> it's a habit that they'll just continue to peck each other. So if we don't get it under control, usually within the first two weeks of the problem, it then becomes just a habitual issue. Then the salt may or may not work. Then you may have to remove light for up to 24 hours to make the stop pecking stop. If that doesn't work, you have to remove and replace the flock or shoot the ones that are pecking. So back of the head is like I said, it's usually too much light transmission. People fail to remember that these are jungle fowl that are used to living under the tree canopy in muted light. <coughs> So a chicken does not really want more than 40% light transmission of direct light transmission. They're always looking for some shade. They will only venture into direct sunlight for short periods of time for exercise or just goofing off or something like that. But their, their living conditions preference is 40% light transmission. And if you can put them under a green cover with 40% light transmission, they're calmer yet. <clears throat> Using clear glass or uh, clear corrugated fiberglass panels or even clear plastic is absolutely a mistake because it <clears throat> the light can A, transmit, but it refracts and changes the angle of the light, which actually overstimulates the chicken's photoreceptors and encourages more pecking. This is especially bad right after a fresh snowfall because the reflection off of the snow going into a chicken house can, can trigger cannibalization as quick as anything. So at the saddleback, primarily being a protein, either an incorrect protein, not just a methionine. <clears throat> so it could be a lack of protein, it could be a lack of methionine, level hasn't been reached, it can also be triggered by incorrectly roasted soybeans. So anything that disrupts the protein digestibility of the chicken to cause a deficiency can trigger
trigger cannibalization. So it's not just methionine. Don't get hung up on the fine point of methionine. So methionine, the only reason you'd see that is if they were eating the feathers, but the protein or the incorrectly roasted soybeans, they will not eat them. They will. They will still. They will. No because matter what. What's happening is even though we may have on paper the right amount of methionine, if the soybean is not properly roasted, they can only utilize 15% of that protein. So the methionine in the soybean doesn't count anymore. Okay. <clears throat> it's still a methionine issue, but it doesn't mean that you need to add more methionine. It may mean that you have the wrong proteins. You may not even have enough total protein based on the stage of production. So the tailhead pecking is really the birds are just, they don't have enough living space. And each breed's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, some breeds, particularly the hybrids like the sex links, uh, they can live in one and a half square feet per bird. Whereas something like a black ostrilorp or a Rhode Island red is not gonna be comfortable in anything less than three square feet per bird. But it's almost always gonna be a crowding issue or a competition for an area issue. And then event packing, if it's not mites or lice, the birds need to be inspected, picked up and inspected <coughs> to see if the vent has been prolapsed and that's the area being pecked or is it away from the vent? And if it's away from the vent, it's more than likely a parasite, external parasite issue, which can easily be corrected by dust bathing with ashes or peat moss or something along those lines. So if it's not external, then if they're actually prolapsed or if they're peck outs, then we need to get, they need to A, walk the flock to pick up birds that are trying to lay eggs on the floor, and B, they need to get curtains on the nest boxes so that the nest boxes are a nice, dark, very, very dark area for the hen to lay her egg and they also need to make sure that the, the nest boxes did not have direct sunlight or direct light of any type going into those nest boxes. The nest boxes need to be in the darkest location between sunrise and noon in the morning in that in that hen house which is generally going to be the south wall and the east wall. Somewhere in the southeast corner should be where a hen is trying to lay her egg. Now, head pecking can also be too hot. If they're in a confined space and the temperature is too high, that can also cause irritability. Can poor air quality irritate them enough to want to peck? Yeah, almost any environmental irritation can cause it. You know, a, a long, lengthy period of rain where they can't go outside and function high ammonia levels, poor air quality can also trigger it, but that typically is uh, either head pecking, rare occasions can be tail head pecking. with old birds but everybody wants to blame feed for pecking and there's only one feed issue that can cause pecking I'm sorry two poor protein quality lacking methionine or not enough feed so for the idiots who tend to want to limit feed too tightly and not give their birds enough feed that will also induce pecking Did we miss anything Jet Walker questions do you ever put like Vaseline on pecs to stop it? Or? Absolutely. Uh, regular old petrolatum jelly will work perfectly fine on a wound. Uh, if you want, you can mix a little bit of cayenne pepper with that. Just dab it on the wound. It usually only takes one or two applications. Then the other hens that were pecking all of a sudden don't like the taste of petrolatum on their beaks and they spend the rest of their day wiping their beaks off and trying to get that nasty taste out of their mouth. <laughs> so pecking is not on the priority list at no longer. If the birds actually pecked out because of trying to lay an egg and, you know, and it's 
best to actually separate her for a few days and let it heal. Somewhere between five and seven days, she should be ready to go back into population. You can actually do that with any pecked bird. Create a hospital pen or a protected area and treat the wound. And uh, once the redness is gone, they can go back in. Just reintroduce them in the middle of the night when all the hens are sleeping. boxes and the roosting area so the bedding needs to be removed and replaced the chicken house or the whatever structure they're sleeping in should be at least dusted down with compressed air it should also be sterilized with something of an oil-based type of disinfectant and <clears throat> that should be the nest boxes the roost the house and then new bedding put in uh, in the middle of the winter when they're being extremely aggressive for some reason by free choicing good high quality alfalfa hay that's really leafy will often take the target off of the other chickens and give them something to peck at besides each other. So you're basically providing them a distraction. Exactly. Something that they like to peck at and besides each other. Right. So that's something that could be could happen all year long if you were able to provide something in there to break up a little bit of the monotony while you figure out what the real cause is. Yep, absolutely. Hey, thanks for listening. That's going to do it for this episode of Pasture Poultry Talk. I want to thank you for joining us on our drive to Arkansas. Hope you found some value out of that. Hope that you take those items to heart. And the next time you have feather picking or cannibalism, you'll be able to diagnose this problem without ever asking a question. Not that asking questions are bad, but you will become the expert if you can listen to what Jeff has just told us. It addresses, I think, probably just about all of the scenarios that we may encounter. Just wanted to remind you that this podcast is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors. And our sponsor for this episode is Badger's Millside Farm. And that's me, folks. That's my farm. That's my business. And uh, I carry a full line of poultry processing equipment for small scale flocks um, folks like you folks like me we we are a dealer for the poultry man and the featherman lines uh, we can mix and match get you the best thing you need for your particular processing setup so check us out at millsidefarm.com m-i-l-l-s-i-d-e-f-a-r-m.com thanks